This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. Hi, Carm Capriato, the Aftermarket Podcast Guy, and welcome to the 620th episode of Remarkable Results Radio and the second part of my great interview with Sarah Frazier on Millennials. Sarah's from Haas Performance Consulting, and she'll cover a large swath of Millennials' behaviors as it relates to being a customer or a team member in your business. Understanding this important and powerful generation will allow you to embrace them to their fullest. Now, you may have millennial children, customers, nieces, and nephews. You may even be one yourself. You know, millennials account for a third of the workforce, and you need to know their tendencies as it relates to relationships in the workplace and as customers. Our aftermarket content is possible and thankful to the sponsorships of Shopware and Apex. Hey, now I just heard that Apex 2021 will again have the best and the brightest trainers and another great schedule of technical and management training. Now, this is specifically for shop owners and technicians. Now, stay tuned right here, right here for more details. And so for now, make sure Apex 2021 is on your calendar, November 2nd through the 4th in Las Vegas. Hey, let's face it, technicians are your inventory of time. And it's the only inventory that expires every minute of every day. Maximize sales and speed to get the cars moving through your business faster. Want to know how and why? We'll learn more at GetShopware.com. Hey, the majority of you listen to mobile. And if you're not listening on a mobile device, download a free listening app at RemarkableResults.biz forward slash listen and bury yourself in this audio that takes you to the front line of aftermarket business acumen. Hey, the key talking points for this episode with Sarah Frazier and a link to her previous episodes resides at remarkableresults.biz forward slash E620. Hey, a warm welcome to Sarah Frazier from Haas Performance Consulting. Hello, Sarah. Hey, Carm. If you didn't listen to the episode from a few weeks back with Sarah on Millennials, uh, you know, the whole reason to bring Sarah on, because we've done like nine episodes together, and she's such a passionate speaker to the industry about Millennials, is I wanted to freshen it up and update it because things change. But yet, based on the last episode that we did, you haven't changed much. Our job is to change some of the uh, perspectives of the people in the industry as to uh, how to, and in our first episode was on what millennials want from repair shops and then uh, millennial employees and, and how to integrate them in the business, what they're looking for. And that was a great episode. So go back and listen to that. Today, we're going to talk about why aren't millennials applying to your shop? If you're trying, you say, hey, listen, I've got my, my, my workforce is aging and I need some new young people. Maybe, maybe possibly why those 30 somethings aren't applying. And then the whole thing uh, about the business the culture environment uh, in, inside the business. Let's start. Please go back and listen to the episode that Sarah and I did because it really emphasizes the socialness and the Instagram-ish and the Facebook and the, the moment in my life. And so if you've got a bad reputation as a shop, <laughs> I, I believe before the person even considers applying, they're going to check you out. For sure. 100%. I mean, I wouldn't go buy a product without reading the reviews. Why would I agree to a job without learning about the company? I am absolutely going to research the company. I'm going to, you know, people leave reviews on Google, not just as customers, but also as employees. You'll see companies that have reviews from current or past employees, and sometimes they're great and sometimes they're not so great. Um, so I'm absolutely going to look at all that stuff before I ever decide not necessarily before I decide to apply, but before I decide to accept an offer, I'm for sure going to look into the company and do my my research a little bit. Um, and so with that being said, one thing that you can do is have your current employees leave you reviews on Google and talk about how much they love working for your company. If you have employees, if if you have a great business culture and you have employees who love being there, ask them to share that. Ask them to leave that review. Ask them to post about it on their social media, especially if you are hiring, right? Because that's social media, word of mouth, that is so big. You know, they might know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody and they see this and they're like, wow, that person loves their job and they're really happy working there and they're hiring. Maybe I could be really happy there too. In the previous episode, we talked about the safety of the the operation. If you don't have a place that looks safe and inviting and clean, 
that's a turnaround. I mean, maybe your website reflects that, but if you walk in and the shop doesn't reflect what the website does, you've got a strike against you, right? For sure. Yeah. If, if you're going to interview me, I definitely want to interview where I can get a walkthrough of the business too. So I can see where I'm going to be working or what I'm going to be doing. I would really like to be interviewed by somebody who also works there too, because then I get a feel for, do they like their job? How do they feel about it? You know, How am I going to get along with the other people? Am I a good fit here? As a millennial, when I'm looking for a job, it's not just, am I qualified to do the job they're asking me to do? It's, how am I going to fit in? Am I going to be able to contribute? Am I going to be respected? Am I going to be safe? Am I going to be comfortable? There are so many factors that contribute to me deciding where I want to work other than just, I need a paycheck and am I qualified? What about the flexibility of hours coming in early, late, you know, working around schedules, you know, double income, uh, lots of things going on with kids you want to play in that arena? Uh, You can't be rigid and embrace millennials. Is that the point? Yeah, we really do need that flexibility because our life, our family, our what we do outside of work is more important to us than work itself. And that's a bit different because when you look at... My dad will tell this story about... So my dad's a boomer. My brother is like in the cusp between Gen X and Millennial. When he was younger, he was playing football and my dad wanted to get him interested into other careers, you know, and was going to take them him to this career fair. And he, they were on their way there. And he said to him, you know, Andy, would you ever consider doing what dad does? And I think my brother was like 14 at this time and without hesitation said, no, I would never be away from my family that much. So, I mean, that right there says it, you know, we, we grew up with parents who maybe weren't at home or were working a lot, especially for Gen X. I think Gen X was very independent and took care of themselves and and the parents were both at work and that's not something they want and you know in their life I want to be able to spend time with with my friends with my husband I want to be able to do the things that are important to me but I I still want to work and I still want to work somewhere that I like to work but I need that little bit of flexibility okay well for me personally I need a lot of flexibility but <laughs> they've got to pick their kid up from school at 3:15 can they leave for half an hour pick up their kid from school and then come back and work maybe a half an hour later is there that option is there are we able to work around what it is that's going on in their lives because that's more important to them than work the taking care of their family and and all of those things and not missing baseball games and not missing performances and all those sort of things are more important what's the the impact that facebook linkedin indeed instagram have on the hiring process for a millennial I think it's big. It gives us a lot of places to look. It gives us um, LinkedIn definitely is great because we can search just in what we're interested in. Uh, Indeed is awesome. Indeed is a really great place to search for jobs that are available. Uh, We just moved. My husband just started a new job um, and he did find it through Indeed and it's worked out really, really well for him. But again, we did research this company before he started working there and we did look at reviews and and what they do and how they operate. And um, it's been a really good fit for him. But yeah, I think all of those Craigslist, social media, Facebook, the more you can put it out there that you're looking for somebody you know, the the bigger net you cast, obviously, the more feedback you're going to get. How are we advertising for this job? You know, are we, what does it sound like? Is it just, I'm going to come work for you? Are you inviting me into a place with, you know, are you showing your culture in that invite? Are you inviting me into a place, you know, we're a family owned business. We do this for our employees. We do that, you know, share the really cool things about yourselves because you're in a way, advertising to an employee just like you would to a customer it's not just a job that you're hiring for you you want to bring someone into a a culture that they care about and you mentioned the word family which i think is huge because a lot of business cultures have a family feel to it because you know you spend a third of your time at business sometimes even more We've done episodes on this, how, do you, how to hire you know, superstar employees and you know the strategy on what the words you use in those ads, especially if you're looking to attract younger people that are going to stay with you for a while. And, and oh, by the way, that's another really interesting thing. Are millennials going to have 10 jobs in 10 years or are they going to stick around? What do you see? I, like a true millennial, have had probably over 15 jobs in the past 15 years. <laughs> um, so I, I've, I've bounced around a lot. I did a lot of different things. But when I found a place that worked for me, I stayed for a long time. So when I worked at the, I worked at a used car dealership and service center and I stayed there for six years because the culture was for the most part, really, really nice. And it, it was like family. And 
our owner always said, you know, family comes first. If you've got a kid's field trip to go on or this or that, we'll work around it. It was a comfortable place. People were respected. It For millennials, I think a lot of it is we're looking for that home. And when we find a home, we'll, we'll probably stick around for quite a while as long as we can continue to grow and continue to contribute and continue to make a difference. I think that's why I ended up leaving was I got to a point where it just was kind of monotonous and I wanted to do more. I wanted to help more people. And so I took that experience I had working in the automotive industry and decided to branch out and do social media for automotive shops and to do this and to come on and, and talk about how you can work with millennials and attract millennial customers and attract Gen Z customers. And um, But yeah, I think once we create that that home for a millennial, they'll stick for a while. They're not going to... Typically, they won't leave unless you give them a reason to. And in my experience, most of the jobs I've left are either because they don't exist anymore. I was a store manager for a Blockbuster video. That's not around anymore. That's not a job I could continue doing. Um, so that's one reason that we have a lot of jobs is that they, they just aren't there anymore. Um, but another reason is, you know, the culture. I worked somewhere where... I had a boss who always treated me really, really well, but was horrible to one of my coworkers. And I just couldn't stand for it anymore. And I left. And that's a big part of the culture. So that's a lot of reasons why I've I've left other jobs. One of the things you were talking about was the flexibility. And uh, I remember a great interview I did with uh, Mark Roberts from Shirts Automotive in Shirts, Texas. And uh, I think his partner, uh, John Long, was was on that episode. And I can't quite remember, but he, he offers a high degree of flexibility to his team. And part of the rationale, because it's family based, and if you've got to do this, as long as we know, we're going to work around it. You, you be with family. And John and Mark always said, so what's the worst that can happen? We're so bold italic into making sure that we meet our commitments every day. But if I know that this person's not going to be here, well, then you schedule differently. The business won't suffer. I don't believe the business ever suffers. It's the old story go on vacation and we managed without you. And sometimes we manage better. (laughs) Don't get me started on that. You know, I've always been an individual that says, if you're not at the top of your craft, don't go on vacation (laughs) because the world will realize we didn't need you. So about that, you know, like saying, if you've got a family thing that you need to be gone for, you know, and it's fine, we'll work around it. Pushback we hear from that often is, well, if I do that for this person, then I'm going to have to do it for everybody. So what? Right. So what? Then everybody is willing to step up and help because if I know my coworker has to be out for two days to go take her grandma to get surgery, I'm going to step up and I'm going to help take care of her job too because now I know if I have to be out or I have to go do something, they're going to do that for me too. Like, because that's your, your culture. That's, we work as a team. We work as a family. We take care of each other. You know, it's not, well, I'm going to do this for you this one time. I'm going to let this person take this day off this one time, but this isn't something we normally do because then that becomes more, it's not as equal opportunity. It's not um, in a, something that's available to all employees. So if we're going to be flexible, yeah, be flexible for everyone and let us help each other out and and work together and create that teamwork. Carm here and coming up, Sarah explains the boss role in a millennial relationship. Hey, Carm here, and I can't say enough about the quality of instructors and the high level of technical and management training that was offered during the recent virtual Apex experience. Now, the great news is that show organizers for Apex 2021 are already hard at work to again assemble the best and the brightest instructors and the most timely and needed training for shop owners and technicians. Watch for a robust schedule of training and product demos on topics such as wheel alignment and ADAS calibrations. Also training on how to be an effective leader, engine performance, diagnostic strategies, controller area networks, and using social media to grow your business. Now, those are just to name a few. With this caliber of training, make sure Apex 2021 is on your calendar November 2nd through the 4th in Las Vegas. And together, let's make 2021 the year of growing sales, profits, and productivity for your business. Listen here for more Apex 2021 training and registration information. You know, auto repair is a high dollar, high value transaction and your customer sensitivity about how much it costs and why is never more important than when you ask them to pay the bill. While these conversations can sometimes feel awkward or uncomfortable, it's important that you don't fall down and cheapen your services at the final step. Shopware's shop management platform now offers a solution that helps you showcase the value and sophistication that you've invested throughout the repair. 
With our innovative digital workflow, customers can review, approve, and even pay for services right from their smartphone. Let remote pay work for you and improve your customer experience. Get started today. Visit GetShopware.com for more information and to request a demo. Attitude, having a bad attitude or having a an undesirable in the company, you know, that I, I continue to tolerate because we've got work and, you know, is everyone know in the in the company knows that this person should go and you never pull the trigger on it. OK, we know that and it goes on and we're all guilty of it. Does that seep out of the company because the millennial is so connected through social media? It, it, so, so I want to find out about X. It's probably not hard to just friend someone on Facebook and ask a current employee, tell me, uh, how is it to work there? So if you're doing some misstepping, that could prevent a, a superstar coming to work for you. For sure. So word gets around or it, you might have this person that maybe I've worked with them before at a different shop and I know we know what they are like and now I know they work for you and I'm a great employee, but there's no way I'm coming to work for you with that person. So you could be missing out on um, a good employee by keeping that undesirable around. You know, again, Facebook, social media, absolutely. People can ask questions. People can find out, you know, who works there, or maybe they know a little bit about that person's attitude or experiences, or maybe they know somebody that used to work there and how it was. So not only is that damaging to people that could be coming into your business, but also to the people that are currently there, because you keep that person that just to have somebody there, but they're ruining the culture of your business and you could be losing your other employees. And let's go into that culture piece. I think it's a great segue into it. Everything that we talk about matters to the real world, but I think we have to stop and remember that the millennials are connected, so there's not much you could get away with. We are really talking about really good business practices. It's not secretive. I mean, it goes back to your word transparent that I think we talked about in the last episode. You have to aware that if there's something not right in the OK Corral, those people that that you would love to recruit, be it customers and or future employees... They know about it. For sure. I mean, it's your, the way you do business, the way that your culture is, is apparent, not just to your employees, but to your customers as well. When I walk into a business, you know, you can feel the atmosphere. You can feel if there's tension between people um, or if I hear some, you know, somebody yelling at an employee, like that's not an app, that's not a place I want to go do business. That it's not like a culture I want to be a part of. And you can, share your culture on social media. You can share, you know, the things that you're doing that are really, really great. But the community does talk. And, you know, if somebody had a bad experience, they're very likely to share about it and talk about it. And that word gets around and it's not a secret. What we do at our in our businesses is no longer a secret. It's people are going to talk about it. You have reviews out there. You have all sorts of things where people can communicate and share that information. Well, so what's a millennial's idea of a ideal boss? Is there such a thing? Is there like three or four touchstones that millennials will, uh, will gravitate to? There is. So for me, I want somebody who is approachable. I want somebody that I'm comfortable talking to that if I have an issue, I don't feel intimidated by them or, you know, like they're not going to listen to me. So I want to know that I'm going to, if I have an issue with another employee or with a situation that I can come and talk to you about it, that you're approachable, that you're available to me. And I want somebody who is going to be honest and trustworthy. I want a boss who has a positive attitude, who is just, you know, always kind of our cheerleader and and a good director and giving us what we need to do our job. I also want somebody who's personal. So I want somebody who I get to know a little bit more about them, who isn't afraid to open up a little bit. So you'll find with, with the millennial, we will tell you everything about anything. You know, I might come into work And you'll say, how are you today? And instead of me just being like, oh, I'm good. How are you? I might tell you, oh, I'm, you know, really tired because I was up till four in the morning with my dog throwing up and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm going to tell you all this information that you probably had no idea was coming at you, right? Because you were just expecting, oh, I'm good. How are you? Um, So we like to share a lot. And we kind of uh, connect with people who share back a little bit. So I'm not saying that I need a boss that's going to tell me absolutely everything about their life, but just be kind of personable. And, you know, if you're going fishing over the weekend, tell me about it or, you know, share 
a little bit about yourself. It goes back to the old work is work and, and play is play and we don't play at work. And what you're really saying is we've got to change our tune and, and realize that life after work for a millennial is more important than work. So if you came in and says, Hey, yeah, well, why's your dog? Well, I got a new pup. Oh, that's right. How's a new puppy? That's, that needs to be part of this. You cannot in today's work environment in attracting and grooming millennials ignore any of that like i have great relationships with some of my older bosses that i will still talk to or if something comes up they you know i want somebody that is kind of a role model too or that i can ask questions about things that have nothing to do with work maybe i'm buying a new house and i know they've bought and sold houses before and they've done a lot of renovations and i have this question on should i do this or that or you know i'm still going to call that person and say hey what do you think about this so you're more than just a boss to a millennial you are a mentor a friend um a role model somebody that uh, whose opinion i value and um somebody that i can talk to about things that aren't just within the business too if I got a millennial to come in the door, I, no matter where it was that I recruited them and they're sitting in the office and no matter what your recruitment process is and how many interviews and do they work, you know, with the other text, you know, multiple interviews, knowing what the millennial values helps the story that gets told on both sides. I mean, obviously we love to listen, you know, listen more than you're speaking, but when you find those, those moments where the millennial potential employee is starting to talk about this stuff, then you've got to relate how important that is to your business. The millennial prospect employee has to know that the lifestyle you've created, the culture you've created works for them. Absolutely. If you don't have the culture that you need right now to be able to hire the millennials who are going to re really be running your business in the future, you have to change. Now, do you do a lot of that with you and your dad in the, in, in, in the company? This whole ch culture change thing and getting people uh, on the right track. Yeah, we do mentor a, a little bit on just kind of embracing change and, you know, we've had that kind of issue with people saying, well, if I do, you know, if I let this person come in at, 10 o'clock and leave later every day, then I'm going to have to offer that same opportunity to everyone and just kind of pointing out like, no, if you explain the situation, more than likely the rest of the staff is going to be willing to help because you have this, you know, they care about each other. Um, we do help mentor and help, you know, embrace the change and kind of shed, especially for me, I like to shed just my perspective because I do have more of the customer perspective than I do as the business owner perspective. And I have more of the employee perspective than I do as the owner perspective. So there's actually a class that dad and I have taught together. And so it's really cool to get him as the business owner and as the boomer, and then me with our kind of conflicting opinions and ideas. But it's it's nice to get that information out there and help companies understand that it's okay to change and it's okay to adapt to your employees and their needs and to create this space where your employees can, you know, succeed and flourish and the things that you can do to really help encourage that. And that a lot of it starts with you and it starts with your attitude and your leadership and your direction and the example that you're setting for your staff. I love your dad's style and I can't imagine both of you in front of a class doing he says, she says <laughs> that I, I one day have to be able to, to watch that. I, I, not only I'm sure you guys do a lot of great teaching, but, uh, but knowing you too, it would be just fun to watch you guys go at it and, and all for the goodness of, of, you know, helping people change and embrace this. And, you know, your dad is a very, very wise person. Point is, is that, listen, if you want to hire millennials and they're applying at your shop, there's a lot of things that they're looking for. And if you don't have the right culture for them, they're just going to do a, a drive by, you know, they're going to find out about that on social and they'll do a drive by. They'll never want to come there. But if you get them to come in the door, there's a, there's a special way you gotta, you gotta handle them because when they get inside and the things that you say that you do, you're not doing, they're not going to stick around. They're going to go. Not at all. The second you say something and then you don't do what you say, you've lost my trust. And that's something I, I need in a, in a boss is I need somebody who's trustworthy. I so appreciate you coming on, uh, you know, our round two, getting, getting this millennial update. I think we all 
can use that little kick in the butt every once in a while to, to remind ourselves, you know, what we're doing inside the business. So the, you know, the part one that we did a few weeks back and in this part two on the millennials, uh, was great. And, and I so appreciate it. Next time you have done any additional research or updating, please come on and, and help us. And especially the Gen Z thing. And I know you're hot on that. And as we look at uh, Gen Z, and is it true that Gen Zs are more like the boomers? Yes and no. They definitely have some similarities, but they have a lot of differences too. So they're their own unique generation and they are doing some pretty awesome things. And, and even since I started talking about them two years ago, they have changed and grown. And um, it's it's been a really cool thing to watch this generation. I think they're going to be a breath of fresh air to um, business in general. Uh, they definitely do business differently. They shop differently. They see things differently. They work differently. Um, and different isn't bad. You know, t- change isn't bad. Different isn't bad. So it's just a, a new way of doing things, and it's going to be pretty exciting, I think, to see more of that coming into our into our businesses. We have to keep up with what's going on out there. That's the that's the story. You you, you can't sit behind a rock or under a rock, and, and and think you know how to lead people how, and and how to embrace the marketplace. I, I guess it would be fun five years from now is, is Gen Z even be, has a, a bigger am, impact on, on potential employees to be able to, to manage all of those, you know, crazy and changing needs and wants uh, from, from the generations. Never before, I think, have we realized that doing business is going to be, you know, different and then throw the pandemic on top of all of this and what the new normal is going to look like. Boy, do you have to pay attention to your business? 100%. You sure do. And it. I'm, I'm glad that we're revisiting this millennial topic too, because I think a lot of people see Gen Z customers or employees coming in, you know, 20, 22, 23 year olds, and they go, oh, young person. And they start thinking, oh, I've done all this training on millennials. I know this person. I know what they're looking for. That's not a millennial. They're Gen Z and they think and act quite differently than millennials do. So I do think it's for sure important that we understand them and get to know them and they're a pretty awesome, interesting generation. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of what they bring to us. Yeah, let's one day take a T chart, you know, put the millennials on one side and say, the millennials wanted this, the Gen Z want that. That would be so cool to be able to do a little comparison because, you know, what we do here on the podcast is that we not only talk about the stuff that made people successful, we're also looking down the road. And if there's anything that we can bring uh, to the to the minds, great insight to, to, to the uh, unbelievable Unbelievable listenership that that we have here on the podcast. Uh, and thank you for being so much a, a part of it, Sarah. Of course. And I just kind of want to touch on that too a little bit on, on Gen Z being different in our, our industry. I think what's going to be exciting is, and what maybe is part of why millennials aren't applying to your shop is the way that the industry was looked at when we were growing up and looking for careers and the way that trade jobs were kind of looked at at that point in time versus the way they're looked at now. To me, when I was in high school, I would have never thought that I could be a mechanic. That like was never even something I would have considered. Where now I think you have a lot of young women and men who are like, yeah, I could do that. Why, why couldn't I do that? I could, you know, um, so I'm very excited to see that come in and really bring us more people in that want to come and work in this industry and that are going to bring a lot of talent to our industry. Um, and I think it's just, you know, showing that you can be successful as a mechanic. You can be successful. You can make a lot of money as a mechanic. It can be a really awesome career for you. And I think maybe there are certain jobs in our industry that we as millennials growing up, didn't see them that way. Or like my brother who thought my dad was away at work too much. Like we didn't want that kind of job. And so now showing like you can be a mechanic or you can be a shop owner and still have a family and still have a life and make enough money to go out and travel and to go do the things that you love to do. And just showing that that opportunity and those possibilities are there and making it a more enticing place for people to want to be. You know, that shops aren't always dirty or that, you know, it's not this environment that we wouldn't want to be in because it's, you know, we have to adapt and change and and make it a comfortable space. And I think the more we can show that, the more we can get more talent to us. Great point. Thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Carm. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time. 